Okay, in today's video, I am going to go over Coulomb's law and the electric force. Now, we're not going to actually do any calculations in this video. I'm just going to go over it kind of qualitatively, talk about the equation, talk about the definition we have here, and where the force derives from. Okay, so Coulomb's law. Coulomb's law, I think most people, when they think of Coulomb's law, they think of just the equation. But essentially, uh, maybe a definition might be that Coulomb's law describes the electrostatic force between electrically charged particles. That means in order for there to be a force, the particles have to be charged. And you have to have two particles. And in this case, we could have one positively charged particle, and we could have one negatively charged particle. The one on the left you call particle one, and the one on the right we'll call particle two. Now, it's not necessarily a proton and an electron, although it could be a proton and electron, but it could be any charged object. Okay, and when we have charged objects, they will exert a force on each other. For example, in this case, they are oppositely charged, so they are going to be attracted to each other. This is the positively charged particle, which I have designated as red. And this is the red arrow. This arrow represents the force that this particle feels from this particle. And this arrow represents the force that this particle feels from this particle. Now, in this case, we have a negatively charged particle and a positively charged particle, just two particles. So the force that they're going to feel is going to be opposite in direction, but equal in magnitude. Now, the force is a force. And the, for the electric force is a force, and a force is a vector, so we show that graphically with an arrow. And the arrow has to have direction and magnitude. Now, oftentimes when we're drawing and we're doing these problems, we're not going to really be drawing the force to scale, but we want to show that it has definitely has direction. Okay. Now, this force here, we're going to designate as F12. F for force, one for, it's the force on particle one from particle two. So we say F12. Now we could say F21, the force from particle two on particle one, but usually in most textbooks I think it would be F12, it's the force on one from two, and then that would make the other one F21, the force on two from one, okay? So that's kind of how we show it graphically, and that's a little bit how we think about it, how we designate it, and we write it down when we're doing our problems and making our sketches. All right, now, we could, of course, have two positively charged particles, and then those two positively charged particles would repel each other, and of course, this is the force, this arrow, this vector, force is a vector, represents the force on number one from number two, and this one, of course, is on number two. From number one. And the same thing would go if we have two negatively charged particles. We have two forces, they repel each other, and we would have F12 and F21. Okay? So that's how we kind of like to draw it. And we have a word problem, we usually make a little sketch, draw the particles, the forces, and the directions that the forces are acting on those, and whatever forces are acting on those particles. Okay, now, Coulomb's law. What is Coulomb's law? Coulomb's law is this equation, force electric. Okay, this is the force electric. Maybe it's different than the force gravitational, force magnetic. This is force electric. And the way we calculate the Coulomb's force, the force acting on a charged particle from another particle, is we have a constant which we call K. And we're going to divide some stuff here. And the force is equal to K times the, ch the charge of one particle, Q, being the symbol for charge, and times, okay, we don't put a necessarily put a multiplication sign here, but it's the, ch the charge on one times the charge on the other divided by the distance between the two particles. Sometimes people put an r here, r squared, the radius squared. I like to put a d, d squared, divided by the, the square of the distance between them. Okay? Now, the charge you usually be given, the other charge you can be given, the distance you be given, and k you need to maybe remember now, a lot of times you'll get it on an equation sheet, but it's pretty easy to remember, just k equals 9 times 10 to the 9th, okay? Usually it's just round, it's like 8.99 or something, but 
usually just round it 9 times 10 to the 9th. Now, it is important to remember that it has these three units, Newton, which is the unit for force, meters squared, which is a unit for distance, and Coulomb squared, which is the unit for the charge. Okay, the Q stands for charge, but C is the unit for charge, which is the Coulomb from Coulomb's law. Charles Coulomb. Okay, so uh, now this equation tells us, and this is something conceptual, I think it's a good idea to know, the force on the particle is directly proportional to the magnitude of the charges. So that basically says if we increase the charge, the force goes up. If we increase this charge, the force goes up. If we decrease either of the charges, then the force goes down. But it's also the force is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the charges. So you can see this is not just distance, it's distance squared. So as the distance goes up, the force goes down. As the distance goes down, the distance between the particles goes down, the force is going to go up. Now that should make some kind of common sense because you increase the charges. Okay, Just think of magnets or this is the case, it's electricity. You increase the charge, the force goes up, but you make the charges farther apart. They're not going to feel each other as much. Okay, now this equation, this type of equation is often referred to as an inverse square law, an inverse square law, because it's inversely proportional to the distance, okay? So this is the equation, k, q1, q2, divided by d squared, the radius squared, and this is k, 10 times 10 to the ninth, 10 times 10 to the ninth, Newton meter squared, Coulomb squared, all right? Now, there's one interesting thing I think I should just I'd like to mention is there are other inverse square laws, and one of them you should be familiar with is, of course, now the electric force, but the other one you should be familiar with is the force due to gravity. Okay, now it's interesting. We have two charged particles. They can exert a force. The force of gravity is due to two objects that have mass, and the equations are very similar to each other. It's fascinating. Okay, so in the first case, we have our constant K, and on this case, for the gravitational force, we have our constant g. Now, this constant is much bigger, 10 to the 9th. I should remember, but this is like 10 to the minus 27th or something, because the gravitational force is much weaker than the electric force. All right, so then we're going to do some division. And of course, we just said it's the charge of one times the charge of the other. Now, for gravity, gravity acts on two objects that have mass. So in this case, it's going to be the mass of one times the mass of the other. And then we said earlier that this is then the square of the distance. Well, the gravitational force is the same thing. It's the square of the distance, okay? So to calculate the gravitational force, it's g, m1, m2, divided by the square of the distance. And in this case, it's k, q1, q2, divided by the square of the distance. <clears throat> okay, so you can see those are very similar to each other, even though the objects are very different, okay? All right, now, the, uh, the electric force <clears throat> can attract or repel which is different than the gravitational force, the gravitational force can only attract. It only attracts. The electric force acts only on charged objects. Okay, we don't use this to calculate this equation to calculate the force of gravity or the attractive force on two objects because they're mass. We use it to, use, to calculate the electric force. And this one, the gravitational force, acts on all objects that have mass. Okay. So I think that's just an interesting comparison. Maybe you're more familiar, you've talked about before, uh, the force of gravity being g, m1, m2, d squared. Well, the electric force is just k, q1, q2, divided by d squared. Okay, so that's it. Next video, we'll do some problems. This is just a quick overview of Coulomb's law and how we calculate it and the equation. Not really how we calculate, but just the equation that we use. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that helpful. If you found that helpful, you can give me a thumbs up or a nice comment in the comment section below, and then watch the next video where we actually do some fun calculations, okay? Thank you very much. See you in the next video.